Hello everyone and welcome to episode 71 of Legacy Gaming with Atari Man 71. I guess this is my golden episode because of the 71's linking up. So before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone to play the games you have. It's great to grow your collection, but remember to play the games you already have. I'm doing these streams and these videos because I have this extensive collection and I really haven't touched it in almost 15 years. Try not to collect these games like they're trading cards. They were made to be played, so I think that you should. I'm playing mine and I'm having a great time. I think it's good for the cartridges too, it keeps the contacts clean. So I just want to add that if you enjoy retro gaming or legacy gaming as I'm calling these games, and videos like this, please like and subscribe and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm very active on all three platforms under the name AtariMan71. In this episode, I'm going to be playing three games which were published by Data Age. <laughs> The game titles are Encounter at L5, Warp Lock, and Snake. And I can tell you I have not been looking forward to Data Age. So, I will, uh, here's the first game on my list. It's Encounter at L5. I don't know if you can read that. I think that's upside down that way. So, here. Boy, it's terrible. These silver labels, it's kind of tough to see them. So I'm going to just put that in. 2600 Junior. I'm going to turn on my video capture card. And I will turn on the console. So this game automatically starts playing. So I'm just going to mute it while I share my information. So Encounter at L5 is cartridge DA1001. It was released in 1982. The controller this game uses is the paddles. And I'm really not a big fan of the paddles. Um, I have my set of paddles right here. It's just one of them. The other one's on, on my bed here. Um, but I actually want to just mention that I actually reconditioned these paddles because they weren't working quite well enough. I, uh, I was concerned a lot of these data age games use paddles, so I just wanted to tear it apart and see if I could clean it out. And when I opened it up, I don't know if someone else had done it or if it came this way, but there was basically black grease inside of them almost. And I know the, they need lubrication because they're just like a potentiometer, but the grease, you know, was kind of making it not work. And these work better now than they've ever worked before. Unfortunately, because I've cleaned them now, maybe I'll have to, to spray this spray that I used to clean them and lubricate them in them all the time just to keep them functioning properly. But they are better than they've ever been. Uh, they don't jump around nearly as much. It's a very simple controller on the inside. It's interesting because I think you could replace <clears throat> excuse me, you could replace the potentiometer in the in the controller with a higher quality one from today, like a sealed one that you don't need to lubricate and clean and things like that. And maybe the games would work better. So like I said, I have a bad history with Data Age games. Uh, I'm actually biased against them. But maybe I'm starting to come around. Uh, the, the, the bias happens happened when I was younger my brother my younger brother <laughs> won a contest in a Cub Scout festival thing and he selected the data age game bugs because the prize was an Atari game he could have selected pitfall and that's really where my disdain for data age comes from because we never got pitfall but, you know, unfortunately, he was enticed by the box art from the Data Age Bugs game. He thought it was next level, and he was, he was a kid. But it's basically when he learned the lesson not to judge a book by its cover kind of thing. And, you know, because they did that, and Data Age is really, the, the, the manuals and the boxes, they're really graphically outstanding. But they're nothing like the game, whereas Pitfall tried to focus on, hey, this is what the game looks like. This is what your game is going to be like when you play it. And uh, 
So, you know, I've played them in practice for this stream. Not that much, but enough. They're not the most fun games. They're very simple. And, uh... Anyway. When I... I wanted to add, too, that when I started collecting Atari 20 years ago, I bought this game and never really played it. Uh... I say it's because... I put up the the system, but I know that it's because it was a data age game. You know, I don't even remember checking this game when it came in. I just, you know, for the sake of being completist on one of the biggest collections you can have, um, when I didn't have any money, um, I uh, I just wanted the cartridge. Maybe I put it in and make sure that it, you know, launched on the screen. Excuse me, but I never played it. Um, so this game is uh, one or two player games. The odd numbers are single player. The even numbers are two player. And, um, you know, you jump through the select switch. I thought I saw, yeah, there's, there's 26 game options in this game. And so... The difficulty switches are also used, but in unison, meaning both players have the same difficulty setting. So I'm going to make sure they're in B. I think they use the left difficulty switch because they use the paddle controllers. And if there's two players, they're only on one difficulty switch. So <clears throat> my advice for playing this game is keep the button on the paddle depressed and then just you angle your firing stream there's a there's a little target at the top that you move left and right on the screen and it changes the angle of your your firing and there's these alien invaders attacking and this game is unusual and you you only have one life and so once the alien lands, not the ships, but there's another thing. There's like a little tone that comes up. Once it lands, the game is over, okay? Or it shoots you. Um, it says you lose a life when it reaches the bottom of the screen, but I've never got it to relaunch. So maybe, maybe, maybe there are multiple lives, but in practice, I was just playing it once. So I will see if there's multiple lives. And the way you move your cannon on the bottom of the screen is you release the button. And then <clears throat> the cannon appears right below where your um, target is. And then you need to press the button right away or else you're going to die. Um, so, and maybe I'm dying other times and I'm just not realizing it that I'm getting shot by these things. But... Uh, it's it's an unusual game and the, the to make matters worse there's not a score in this game so it's really more of a, an exhibition it's really not that fun of a game so anyway vgr ratings for this game the graphics are rated two for reasonable and the playability is three for worth playing So I'm going to unmute my game now. You see the pictures. There's, it's faded. So I'll just hit reset and play game one just to see how it goes. Okay, so I was wrong about there not being a score. Maybe it... Oh, maybe it... Okay. So this... You can actually play the game without resetting it. That's why I didn't have multiple lives. So I'm playing the game here. And I, in practice, I guess I just never really played the game. I just was... Uh, So, so here you see, you can play the game, I guess you can do this for your kid brother or kid sister or, you know, people that 
aren't really that good at Atari. You can still, I guess this is practice mode. So I've gotten a lot of practice mode. So I'm gonna hit game reset and actually earn a score. So I'm gonna lose a life here. Because it started me out right away with one of those evil alien invaders. the third life. So 204. So I guess it's a little better now that I can get a score. game actually. Yeah. Oh that's it. Six hundred and fifty. I got got a little better though. just lost two lives. There's no life counter on the screen. Oh, maybe there is. I'm covering it. Those little red dudes are the ones you want to take them out. points you get a uh, free life or something because it's always
I mean, it's a simple game, but I'm actually kind of coming around on it. Ah, oh, I lost the life. <clears throat> Ooh, thousand points. Look at me. So that's basically uh, Encounter at L5. Not a bad game. Um, not nearly as bad as, as historically I've felt about Data Age games, but uh, it's actually halfway decent. So I'll turn that off. It's interesting that you can play it as practice in, uh, you know, when you plug it in. Let's see if that's the case with a lot of the games today, because I know I don't hit reset on a lot of them. So the next game on my list is Warp Lock. It's too bright. The sun is, or the light is too bright. Silver label just gets washed out. This game, the sound in this game is so annoying, so I'm going to mute it. <clears throat> Not call up my information. So Warp Lock is cartridge DA-1002-1002 and was also released in 1982. And it also uses the paddle controller. And so this is a very odd game for me. I've had it forever, but I've never played it because it's a data age game. In the game, you're a shooter that moves around horizontally in the middle of the screen. And you're shooting at enemies that move diagonally and bounce off the sides and around you. And they come in waves, but you only have to shoot one of them. And they, they randomly change between one, two, or three ships. So you can shoot any of the ships, and the whole wave of them disappear. You play the game. Hold on. Eventually, you start shooting at the, the enemies, and, you know, they'll, they'll come and go. And then there's a UFO that comes. And it comes at different angles, so you're avoiding two of them. So that gets a little difficult. I've not played this game a ton in practice. I've just played it enough to familiarize myself with it. So I'm not that good at it. So we'll see how I do. I did better at Encounter at L5 than I thought I would. So um, now that I know how to play it and there's a score, <laughs> sorry about that, um, I will uh, I'll probably play that a little more often. So the thing I find really peculiar about this game is that you only have one life. When you die, it's over. Also, the highest score can only display 99 points. So if you get 99 points, it rolls to zeros and you have to keep track of the 100 yourself. There are three difficulty levels which you which are controlled by both switches. So you can you have to use both difficulty switches. I'm going to do the easiest which is both in the B and uh, the sound in the game is slightly obnoxious and uh, you, you'll see what I mean and, and you, you can make a judgment yourself. Others have said uh, that this game is fun, but you know, I find it just brief enjoyment like VGR rating. So the VGR ratings for this game, is, the graphics are two for reasonable and the playability is two for dry or brief enjoyment. Get tired of that sound real quick. So I'm just going to hit reset. Ooh, the 
the sound changes slightly. Yeah, see, you're in the middle of the screen. It shows you at the bottom of the screen. You don't get a point for that. And see, one life. That's it. Game over. Game over. There's my debris in space. <clears throat> I knew that was going to happen. Oh, it's their debris in space, I guess. Just got to 12. You see the tempo changes. So that's the thing. You cannot hide on the side that they're coming back on because they bounce. Oh, come on. Doing terribly. Mm. The paddle controllers are not my excuse here because I am just. I think the most frustrating thing is the sound in this game. This constant blipping. Oh my god. That's the worst part of it. I just shot the UFO there. Alright, now photon bombs. Oh, oh, I freaked out. Still haven't seen him. I'd love it if the game could glitch. Mute it, but it's 
see, when it gets behind my head, that's my own dumb fault. You know, I, I, I know I said, oh, it doesn't go over 99 points. Whomever programmed this knew, if you got over 99 points, walk away from the game. That's the thing that drops the uh, bombs. You can take much more of this. I don't know if I can either. I know I can't. And obviously, Mike, I'm not the best gamer, you know, and, and I hate paddle games other than Warlords. Saucer. somebody play this game and decide to release it because it's just terrible. Hey, that's a video game. Let's sell it. We can make tons of money. We'll put really nice pictures on the box and sucker everybody into buying them. Even though this game sucks balls. I don't, I can't play it, but these kids, they'll love it. You know, because it's they're playing on the television. You know, they'll they'll be superstars. Fourteen, I guess that's my high score so far. If it stayed like that, it'd be decent. Because then it's just the sound of your gun shooting and the guy guys blowing up. I just 
This is frustrating, and it's not... Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Mute this crap. I'll just turn it off. Don't play this game. Don't play Warplock. It is trash. This game is garbage. I warn you now, if you buy it, do it at your own risk. And so now, we're going to get into the biggest turd of this broadcast. I don't know if you could read that. Yeah, there you go. Snake. Snake. This game is probably the worst game. Oh, wait, I need to change the controller. This is probably the worst game for the 2600. At least in my opinion, it's... If it's not the worst, it's definitely in the bottom five. So, I will play this briefly. In practice, it did not, it was not really fun to play. I will tell you that right now. Okay, turn the game on. There we go. Looks colorful, right? Alright, so this one does the same thing. Just gonna mute it. Oh no. Okay. It's not gonna continue. So, let's see here. I will call up my information. So, Snake, and I drag the S out because there's three S's, is cartridge DA1003, and it uses the joystick, and I plugged in my Wiko command controller. So this game is ranked among the worst Atari 2600 games you can get. Again, because of Data Age, I bought this and never played it. You know, it Data Age really just left a bad taste in my mouth from my childhood experience. And um, I have to say that this game delivers on all my preconceived opinions. The poor graphics, poor gameplay combine in this mess of a video game. And so in my research of this game, I read a review from woodgamewonderland.com. It's actually a, 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 a blog that was uh, abandoned, and I emailed with the, the slight chance that I would be able to include their information um, in this stream, but uh, I didn't get a reply, so... Um, I would advise you, again, it's wood, woodgrainwonderland.com. I'll leave a link in the description of my video. And I would advise you to go and read the review for Snake. It's, uh, it's hysterical. So in this game, you're basically challenged with... Um, there's a snake, which is the yellow, the yellow thing on the screen... And it runs around, and they, it can run in any direction, and it runs between the red dots. And you can only shoot in between the red dots. And if you shoot the snake, it breaks up into different segments. It's similar to Centipede, how Centipede breaks apart. And then there's these other evil creatures that crawl around, and you can shoot them. <clears throat> and But you're con constrained into the box in the middle of the screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, it's basically like uh, Centipede in four directions. But, um, you know, if you break the snake apart, it's going to get crazy. And I believe in my practice that there were occasions when two snakes were on the screen with multiple other bad guys. The review said, don't kill the snake, just kill the bad guys. And so... That's what I'm going to try to do here. Uh, I haven't practiced this that much. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, like I said, these data age games, I'm not a big fan of them. And so, you know, I have them. I'm going to play them. But this is not my favorite stream to be doing. And I'm going to be playing them today and tomorrow. And that will stream out over the next three days. Um... But, you know, when I get through, the, 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 last, the last two games are okay. 
But um, these games in the middle, I just absolutely loathe. So VGR rated this game. Graphics are two for reasonable. Playability is one for poor. One. And VGR, you know, the, the, it's that is not um, a number they gave out lightly. You know, it was really, I think this is one of the first one playability games that we've come across. It's really a bad game. So the screen went dark. So I'm going to play game one first, and then in um, then I'll play game two, where the snakes come in two different directions. Boy, that was fun. One life. I didn't hit anything. So that's a prehistoric creature. Oh, you have to go to the sides to get it to shoot in different directions. So now I have to go down. Oh, God. I got one point. I mean, this game is terrible. So I'm shooting up. If I want to shoot to the side or to the bottom, I need to move my position so I can avoid the snake. Jesus. It says don't shoot the snake. Oh, these prehistoric creatures don't move. Okay, now they start moving at five points. Start all over. Oh, they, were, they were moving. Ah! Game is garbage! I suppose if you shoot down the sides, you can destroy a snake completely. Yeah, so see there, I kind of destroyed a snake. Well, why am I not hitting this big ass thing? Wow, that snake is flying. Well, it's not the snake. You know, you pull back, because that's normal, and... try to kill this snake. Now what are those guys there for? Can't even touch them. See, he's... Okay. So I don't think it's going to be possible to get him from the side when he's a long snake because he's two blips. Maybe if I came up from underneath. Okay. So... Lessons learned. was there, but I don't think I hit him at all.
trying to get this figured out. My own stupid fault. I just kept pulling on the joystick even though I shouldn't have. I don't think I can get low enough to shoot in there. Okay, so he goes this way, this way, this way. This way, so right there. Okay, we're gonna try this. We're gonna kill this damn snake. I was there. I'm gonna try it again. Now, see, I don't think you can kill the snake because. My bullet shot through the head of the snake, and there's one right there in the second segment, and it's not dead. So I think it's just avoid the snake. That's the name of this game. Shit. Well, that's game one. I'll play game two where there's two snakes. Um, but obviously the, the name of the game is just to avoid the snake. Um, after I accepted that, I got my best game. Now this, the snakes are going to be coming from two directions. So... Oh, coming a little... That's slower. Oh. I guess I did hit the snake. Huh. So I'm hitting it. It's getting smaller. So that's the thing about the snake. I guess you make it smaller. You don't make segments.
You don't get any points for killing the snake. That sucker is flying. That guy is going super slow. So there I eliminated a complete snake. Did it again. No points for killing a snake, by the way. The only points you gain in this game are killing these prehistoric beasts. But when it's coming from two directions... Whoa, wow, I didn't... I can't believe I survived. I guess you can get yourself in between the two of them. I freaked out. I should have gone the other way. Let me play that again. It's interesting. Apparently I wasn't shooting it. One more time, and then we'll end the stream. See, now there I broke it into a segment. tried to sneak by I tried to sneak by it's an interesting game um, it's really very confusing it, it, it could have been done better you know the fact that the snake is is not connected entirely when it breaks apart you, you know and and the and the the frame rate is such that you don't know what direction it's coming sometimes especially when the two overlap and maybe that's on purpose but Gameplay is really not that good on this. I would not advise you picking it up. I have a copy just because I'm a, a, a masochist. <laughs> um, but uh, that snake, it is what it is for whatever reason. So that's my stream for today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I know I'm not the best gamer out there, but I'm trying to bring you basically some information and some gameplay from my extensive collection. I'd like to remind everyone that even though we may be through the worst part of the pandemic, I still want you to be healthy and stay safe. I think it's still a good idea to wash your hands and social distance. I appreciate you taking the time to watch me play these games today. As a reminder, I stream on Twitch Friday, Saturday, and Sunday under the name AtariMan71. The videos from the stream will then be loaded onto YouTube Monday through Friday of the following week. I'll be streaming Atari again on Friday of this week with five new games. Thank you and have a great day.